Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Well, today we're kind of going on a sidebar. We're going to expand on one of the demos that I showed earlier this week on the benefits of recording with small diaphragm microphones, uh, small diaphragm condensers. And they have, um, well, first of all, they're really natural. Okay, they are the best mic to get just a really, um, you know, straight up sound, okay? Very natural sound, orchestral recording, acoustic instruments, stuff like that. Uh, you don't have to add a bunch of EQ to get, you know, top end clarity. Uh, they have great transient response, okay? And then finally, they're very consistent on their polar patterns. So, a large diaphragm, they may not be cardioid all the way through all the frequencies, but small diaphragms, they're going to be able to reject low end sources from behind them. And this comes into play in our example today. I have a friend, Garrett Derhofer, over at Studio 412, uh, a local guy here in Asheville, North Carolina. And, you know, he's got like a really sweet studio with like a whole disco show in his basement. He's got two drum sets, a bunch of amps set up, ready to go. People go there, they jam, they create, they record on the fly. He said, dude, how do I record a piano when I have my drum set like right there that's 10 to 15 feet away? And I said, well, you know, you could use small diaphragms and they actually do a really great job of rejecting what's behind them throughout all of the frequencies, even the low frequencies. And that'd be great because it can reject the drum set. And so I was just there, I wanna show you a few examples today. Um, let's check out our kind of standard setup. He's gonna be playing piano, I'll be playing drums, and I got a SU-013 on the piano, and it's basically nulling out the drum set, meaning that the back of the microphone is facing the drums. We're rejecting those drums as much as possible because it's a cardioid microphone, and it should reject in a really nice way uh, a lot of that drum kit. Let's see how good it did. Okay, so keep in mind, no baffling here. It was just a straight shot to the drums. I was really impressed with that, okay? And again, maybe in the past I would have tried like an SM57 or an Audix i5. I've done that too, you know, thinking, wow, maybe in a live jam situation, you know, I have to use dynamic mics. Well, I guess because of the physics and the design of small diaphragms, we actually can use those and get better results because of the rejection characteristics. It's on that consistency of that polar pattern, okay? It can reject. Um, from behind in the high frequencies and reject from behind in the low frequencies. Large diaphragms, they don't really do that so well. So let's check this out. Uh, this is a Rode NT2000. This is a great mic. I really like this mic a lot. I've used it on piano a lot. I've used it on toms. I like that a lot on toms too. It's got a really nice kind of mid-range to it. Um, but it's a large diaphragm. So we're just comparing the, uh, the design here, okay? A large versus a small diaphragm. Uh, check this out. I'll, I'll play them back to back. Check this out. Okay, so it's a big difference there. Let's keep going. Let's add in a uh, dynamic mic, okay, an SM57, okay? So back to back now, we're gonna start out with the SU-013 uh, by Soyuz, then the NT2000 by Rode, and then the SM57 by Shure, okay? Back to back now and listen to that drum bleed. Okay, so this is just engineering basics at work. Okay, we don't have to use gates, we don't have to use EQ to get any of this. We're just using our know-how of the microphone design 
to get these results. Now, let's take it up a notch and let's actually add in some baffling. Let's take the small diaphragm condenser and let's just really see how good we can get this. All this is, is three different lightweight packing blankets. These aren't really very thick, but we're gonna triple, you know, triple them up. And then we also have a, uh, a, a panel of three inch rock wool. So let's check this out with some baffling. Here's before and after. big difference there, you know? I mean, covering up the piano helps. It ends up getting with just kind of a, a little bit of low end in there. Um, but I'm just amazed how focused that actually sounds. Uh, you know, the low end can be uh, cleaned up with EQ. Okay, I'd rather treat the low end than the high end. Um, but then without any baffling at all, uh, that bleed, it's still pretty smooth. Okay, it's still pretty smooth. So I think the biggest factor at play here was the type of microphone, dynamic, large diaphragm, small diaphragm, condenser microphone. Okay, that was, between those three, that was kind of the biggest difference in sound in our result here and getting that bleed out of those drums. Um, you know, I didn't think to test a ribbon mic. Um, it could definitely work very well too. You just have to really know out the side. So depending on, on how you have the room set up, you could use a ribbon as well. Um, those also have very nice bleed quality uh, characteristics to it, but they are picking up from the back too. Uh, so you are going to get a, a good amount more room sound with a ribbon. It can still work very well. I've done it. I've done it with uh, guitar amps and drums in a room. But for this scenario, I thought that the small diaphragm worked very, very well. Uh, from here, we just added some stick-on foam to you know the big beams of that piano just to help with the reflection. And I packed up my gear and left. I want to say just a big thanks to Garrett at Studio 4 and 2 to let me crash this place uh, with little notice to do this experiment. So guys, you know, give me your thoughts on this. Um, I, this is pretty cool stuff. I'm really pleased with these results. Uh, this is a really cool video. I'll be hanging out in the comments below.